Hello guys, it's Hedda. You guys have been more or less pestering me to make an editing tutorial. So I went on Instagram and I asked what you wanted me to do. It's about 50-50 limb replacement and tack. So I just ended up doing like an overall edit, including face details and stuff. Uh, the only thing I didn't show was I did hair and mane and body hair because I don't think that is my tutorial to show. I don't own technique, I uh, got this technique from a friend and therefore I'm not gonna out her technique. I think that's her tutorial to make if she ever wants to. Therefore I'm not gonna show how to do that. But basically what I start with all my edits is that I take pictures first without bridles and I make sure the field of view is all the way in so you get as close to the horse as possible and then I zoom out just enough to get the entire horse. The closer you are the better. And then I put it into Photoshop and the entire horse and rider and I put it in a new um, Photoshop. I use Photoshop PC by the way. I put it in a new project where I have about 1000 by 2000 canvas with 10,000 resolution uh, so that I have better details to work with. You'll see I don't actually know if I've managed to get it in the video, but when I do this, I put the I copy the horse and rider the blank canvas, and I size it up to make it less pixeled and easier to work with. to have it all it was us against the world but now i've been sleeping on my own spending all these nights alone knowing you're not coming home cause maybe you're running through my dreams it's like your own repeat feels like eternal
Alright, so this is when I start working on rim limb replacements. You'll see it just in a second. Yeah, here. What I do for legs, this was not too complicated because I didn't actually change the way the leg was going entirely. I just rotated it a bit. But the concept is the same either way. Like you see here, I mark. Um, completely around it and then I choose free transformation um, for the leg that is on the other side of the horse I actually put control X and then I get a new layer I put it in that layer and then I put that layer underneath the horse layer so that it gets behind the horse and then I just use free transform and then I rotate it I rotate and move it to exactly where I want it. If I wanted to stretch out the leg, I would select it from the middle of the knee and down, and I would stretch it, and then I would select it from the, um, oh, what's it called in English? Like ankle-ish, down, and move that as well. And then I go up to the part that is now missing of the leg, I use the color selector I select the color of the leg in that area, and I just paint on the missing part of the leg. The back is not that hard, because it's all just sh pretty much shade anyways, so you can get away with one shade of color and no, no blending, most likely. I think I did blend just a little bit, but overall you're probably not going to need it for this. What you see here is that I had already moved the front leg. Um, Bandicam cut out, so you didn't get to see it, but I did exactly what I did with the other front leg. I just moved it so that it looks like the horse was putting its weight on that leg entirely, and now I'm just trying to blend the in the rest of the horse's body. To do this, I use the color selector. I just pick, like, I'm very greedy, I put it. I use every single color for each place like every inch that I move I pick the color again to get it as accurate, accurate as I can I was not accurate enough in this edit I should have been so it was kind of a bad example but I basically just draw on with a pretty harsh brush and then I pick the blending tool the smudging tool I pick a pretty big smudging brush and I just smudge it up. Um, that's the general rule. On horses with this coat, with a lot of dapples and details because smudging can make it look really unnatural and you'll see that I struggled a lot with that later on the neck. But just in general, the leg was not that hard. I blended out the base colors first, I got the general shape down, as you can see I missed part of the leg, but I went in and fixed that later. I went in with dapples over top, that's just how I did the leg. Okay, so now we're almost at basically got the best of me, um, the neck and the head. I've done a lot of neck and head replacement before, and I don't really struggle with it. 
My issue with this edit was, once again, the coat of the horse. Yes, a crazy amount of dapples and details and makes it really hard for me using my uh, techniques to make it look good. But basically what I do for head and neck replacement or readjusting, whatever you want to call it, I mark the head first, I move it down, I want it, and then I move the neck. When I mark the neck, I make sure to go all the way down to the shoulder blades to get the most realistic feel. I don't do individual part of the necks of the neck. Um, if I want to do it more complicated, then I will do that later. I will do the base of the neck first. So here I spent quite a lot of time nitpicking, just getting the shape that I wanted. You'll see that I go back in changing the head and the neck position again because I just wanted the horse slightly annoyed like he was throwing a tantrum because that was the whole point of the edit um, so the initial just placement of the head and the neck is not the issue for me I have a quite, e quite the easy time with it because I've done it quite a few times before the hard part was matching uh, the open space between the neck and the horse together again. As you can see, I just I moved the pieces around using the free transform tool again under edit. It's just the easiest thing to do. And then I go in, I pick the colors for the color picker, and I just fill in. This did not work for me, I had to go in multiple times and as you will see I eventually just settled on m copying a piece from the shoulder and moving it onto the neck. And you'll see that in just a second.
You fascinated me, cloaked in shadows and secrecy. The beauty of a broken angel. I ventured carefully, afraid of what you thought I'd be. But pretty soon I was entangled. You take me by the hand. I question who I am. Teach me how to fight. I'll show you how to win. You're my mortal flaw, and I'm your fatal sin. Let me feel the sting, the pain, the burn under my skin. Put me to the test. I'll prove that I am strong. Won't let myself believe that what we feel is wrong. I finally see what you knew was inside me all along. Not behind this soft exterior. The warrior. My memory refused to separate the lies from truth and search the past my mind created. I kept on pushing through, standing resolute with you. In equal measure, loved and hated. You take me by the hand. I'm seeing who I am. Teach me how to fight. I'll show you how to. I'll prove that I am strong. Won't let myself believe that what we feel is wrong. I finally see what you knew was inside me all along. That behind this soft exterior lies a warrior. Okay, so this was when I decided to be fine with the neck. It had taken me way too long so I just decided that it was time to move on to the head details and just add a lot of snow <laughs> so that you could not see my issues with the neck. So first of all what I do with the face is that I completely redo the shape of the eye. I would recommend using a reference for this. That is, of course, what I have been doing. I've been drawing for a long time. I'm not a great drawer, but I have the general basics down, I would say. So I just try to make the hollow of the eye, or like the area around the eye, look as close to the original game as possible by just using the colors that are around it, using the color picker, and then smudging and oh that's wrong <laughs> yeah and then i go in i fill in the base of the eye or the eyeball and here i have a general thing that i always do i use the dark tool or whatever it's called the burner or whatever i do the outer or the yeah the outer corner darker and i let the inner corner be the original color then I draw with black, I draw the pupil, pupil <laughs> and then I go in with the lightning tool. I first go in with a lighter brown or whatever the color of the horse's eye is and then I go in with the lightning tool and just parts of that brown area I will make lighter and then I will go in with the smudger with the small brush and smudge out just the edges to make it look slightly softer and more natural. 
And then for this horse, I went with white eyelashes because he is gray and it was supposed to be winter. So I just draw on eyelashes with a soft brush. I like to do this on a separate layer just to make sure it looks fine and that I can get rid of it if it doesn't. And then I add whiskers around the eyes. You'll see me going a lot back and forth uh, in Spotify or um, Google Chrome is because my Photoshop tends to stop working. But yeah, I add whiskers around the eyes. I don't add a lot of whiskers, but a general rule for me is that they need to be pretty clear because when I post the picture, they are not going to show up as well from the distance. So, I have no idea what I'm doing right here. But, I'm basically just still working around the eyes, the whiskers. Oh yeah, I'm working on the mouth, sorry. I'm totally keeping up. Yeah, I'm just making the general shape of the mouth. I'm gonna fill it in with foam later, so I'm not too worried about it. And there I'm looking at reference for a tongue, because I've never drawn a horse tongue before. I ended up using that one as a reference. Got a nice pink shade and drew a tongue. <laughs> um, this one I've never drawn before, so I don't know how to explain it. I'm not the person to look for, for a tutorial on that. <coughs> I literally just made it darker at the top and at the at one side of it and then I made the dark stripe in the middle and I made it slightly lighter on the edge and then I smudged it all out because I love smudging After this, I went in with a hairbrush, actually, a downloaded hairbrush from DeviantArt with white. I went for a very small brush and then I used that to draw the foam in the mouth. I spent a little bit of time on this, just getting it right. You have to use a pretty small brush to make it look, I guess, natural in the pixel horse art <laughs> form. And then I just do, drew a lot of dress around it. I drew some dribbles on the tongue. You'll see later that I also add dribbles on the leg and the chest. But it's not that visible in the final edit because there's no... So here I've gotten so far into the details that it is time to move the horse back into the background. So what I do, it's cut out of the video, but I take my own background picture, I just go into the game, I crouch down with my character and I go all the way in uh, with the zoom to get a nice background, as close to the original as possible. And then, and then here you'll see I'm just adding a bunch of whiskers. Since the horse is moving, the whiskers also have to be moving. Around the muzzle, there's a lot more whiskers than around the eyes. So I add a lot of them. I go all out. I love whiskers so much. And then, I don't know what I was doing here. Bear with me. Yeah, this is when I started working on the bridle. I decided to go for a Miklum bridle. When I do bridles, I have a very specific rule that I follow. I look at a reference, I take a faint brush, I sketch out the general shape of the bridle, and then I go in with higher opacity and I draw it with the actual thickness I want it. After that, I go in and remove the parts that 
are covering things that it shouldn't be covering, like for example the main here. And then I add highlights for black bridles. I always use blue highlights. So I just use a paintbrush with the color blue and I add in various places so you'll see later and I smudge it out. And then I add the metal details for this one that was gold. And for those I just always use the burning tool on the edges by the leather. And then I use the lightning tool sort of in the middle of it. So you'll see that now. So, as you can see, I am now adding shading to the metal parts. It's also important to add details like the um, flaps from the um, reins. What do you call them? The leather things that you use to tighten the bridle, like the flaps and the holes. It doesn't show up that well on black bridles, but I still add it either way. Just for details, I also like to add a very faint black rim around the bit because I just think it looks better in a game. For the reins, I do the exact same as with the bridle. I draw the lines and then I draw the highlights with blue. And then at this point, I also like to add in dating. So I take a very light light black brush and then I just oh okay Skype go away I'm sorry anyway then I just add in shading I take a very light black brush and I just make um, very faint strokes I also like to add this around wherever the shade would naturally be. So around underneath the legs um, and then also various other places depending on what kind of edit I am doing.
he runs because he knows he cannot hide he's never gonna make it all the poor people he's forsaken karma is always gonna chase him Sparta follow him down to me Apollo and he'll brace for battle in the night he'll fight because he knows he cannot hide he's never gonna make it all the poor people he's forsaken karma is always gonna chase him Here you can see I had been going on for quite a while and I was getting lazy so I picked up an old show jumping edit of mine and I got the like protectors from there. So if you ever want a detailed tutorial on how I do leg protectors, you can tell me either here in the comments or on Instagram or and then I mean I will consider doing it if there's enough interest for it but it's not really that hard as you can see it's just a blob of color and then after doing the leg protectors I drew on bell boots I'd never done bell boots before so I looked up reference uh, pretty sure I looked it up on my phone just then because I didn't have more Wi-Fi on my laptop so the bell boots didn't turn out great they just became even bigger blobs of color the only nice thing about them was probably the sheepskin that I added all around uh, the top of the rim. But overall, I was pretty pleased with how it turned out. Also, my voiceover is getting worse and worse. I'm starting to get tired. I'm so sorry. Okay, so here you can say I started doing face details. Say, I mean. C. Oh my god. I'm tired. I'm too lazy to go back and fix this voiceover. Anyways, I go to a new layer, I pick a white brush, and I draw on everything that I want. Highlights. After this, I change the setting to overlay, and then I turn down the opacity until it is how I want it. To be. All right, so here you can see that I had already started adding a breastplate. Bandicam cut out, so thing, but it's the literal exact same thing as the bridle and the rain. Sketch it out, then do draw the lines. Um, I didn't want to go all out and create uh, breastplate for this one because there was so much other stuff going on in this. That's why it's so simple.
Okay, so what's happening now is that I started adding snow. To do this, the snow in the air, I made my own brush for it. There, I found a tutorial on it, so I'm not going to show you how I made brush. I'll just link the video down below if I can find it. Um, but basically, I do the snow. I use the exact same technique as the guy in the video that I will link. I do the smaller snow in the far distance, and I add a Gaussian blur to that, and then the two closest layers of snow, which have the biggest snowflakes, I also add Gaussian blur and motion blur to make it look like the snow is moving. But I'll add, as I said, the link so that you can just see for yourself. He goes very much into detail and it's very nice. After I add the snow in the air, I add snow on the ground and on the trees uh, and such. To do this, I go to select, and then I go to color range, then I first pick the ground, and then I go to edit, fill, and white. And I do this with each of the details that I want to have snow on, because it just makes it look like there is snow on it. And if I think it's too bright, then I'll just turn the opacity down. I also... There's a whole technique for doing this, and it's kind of, it's not complicated, but it's a process. And I'm not gonna go into detail once again. I will link the tutorial down below. There's a different tutorial for that one, and it is really nice. Uh, it does not only work for real life pictures, it also works for SSO. And this is the last thing that I did. Then I just added my signature. Uh, my watermark, whatever you want to call it, and I was done. So that's it for the tutorial. I hope it was what you guys wanted and that it was detailed enough. I've never done a tutorial before, so next time it's probably just going to be a speed edit. I'm sorry, but I can do tutorials on smaller individual things because this became very very big and uploading it is going to take a heck of a long time. But I hope it is what you guys asked for. As you can see, I never included how I did the mane, the hair, and the body hair, but as I said in the beginning, I'm not going to trust it is my friend's technique. And if she wants to show you, then she can show you. I will link her Instagram down below, but I am not going to show off someone else's technique. So I hope you liked the video, and just tell me if there is anything else you want to see. I am really tired and I have an exam tomorrow while I am recording. It is 30 p.m. I have a French exam tomorrow. I don't know why I'm doing this. B bye. <laughs>